See, first let's talk about this. Remember, acceleration doesn't mean you change your speed. Okay, I mean it can, but you can be going at a constant velocity, I mean a constant speed of 50 miles an hour and being swung around on this box, right? And even though your speed is stays 50 miles per hour or whatever I just said, uh, constant, you're still accelerating because your direction is changing, okay? So acceleration can mean more than one thing. And that's why I think people don't understand what acceleration actually means. Um, but it doesn't have, to, there's many different ways, you can, well not many, but there's a couple different ways where you can have acceleration, okay? Without moving your spatial coordinates or without changing your speed, all right? First I want to talk about straight lines and parallel lines. Here's two straight lines that are parallel. They will never touch each other no matter how uh, long I draw those parallel lines in flat space, okay? But what happens if I take the parallel lines, I got to take a string, hold the string parallel, and I put it over the top of this ball, and then I glue it there. And then I take parallel lines about this long, and I put them all around the globe, parallel to that original line. And I take another string, I put it over that parallel line, and, and glue it on, and I keep doing that. What I'll get is what I show right here. And that's basically what the, a globe looks like. I think those are the longitude lines, I think. Whatever they are, longitude or whatever. They all intersect at, the, say, the north and the south pole. That's what a geodesic, even though they're still straight, right? If I look at that, if I take, the, you know, the string, I put it on there, it's still going to be straight, right? If I look straight on with it. But because it's on curved curved material, you will get a geodesic. These parallel lines will form geodesics. And I colored it in right here at one geodesic. Here, if I colored this in, that would be the same thing. It's just on its side. If I flip this up, this is that. So what is a geodesic? A geodesic, like I said, is two parallel lines that intersect, because they will always intersect, right? And if you have a man here and you have a man here and they walk at the same constant velocity, uh, speed at 10 mile per hour, right? They're walking parallel to each other. Since it's a, they're parallel geodesics, they will accelerate towards each other. See how they... And what I mean by they will accelerate towards each other, I mean as they move this way along their lines, right? They will converge. There's a speed. At first, it'll be like, say, one, I'm just making numbers up, but say one mile an hour towards each other. But then another second goes by. Now it's one mile plus X. Then another second goes by. Now it's one mile plus two X. And a third second goes by. Now it's one mile, you know, per hour plus three X. And they keep accelerating towards each other. If they walk right at a constant speed, they will accelerate towards one another. Their speed towards one another is accelerated. The distance between the two men is gets smaller and smaller at an accelerated rate. So their speed towards each other, just like uh, when you fall or you know you accelerate towards the ground supposedly, you every second you speed up nine meters per second. Next second, you speed up another 9 meters per second. This is the same type of acceleration. Your speed is accelerated towards each other until you converge. Now, if these straight lines were on, instead of a curved material, a flat material, you would never, they could walk forever and never converge. They would never accelerate towards each other, ever. Now here's a grid. It's two-dimensional. Here's a three-dimensional grid. See right here? Now it's a lot easier to talk about two-dimensional stuff than three-dimensional stuff. So from now on, we're going to be talking about the two-dimensional stuff. And we're going to just forget about the other dimensions. Okay? 
Now I want you to think of this, you're in a spaceship. This is the floor, right? And this is a ball, okay? But we're going to graph it. So this part is time, and this part is space, right? So this would be one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, and so on. And this would be space A, B, C, and D for co spatial coordinates, okay? So if you're in outer space, right, you let go of the ball, the ball will just stay there. What happens in second one? It's at spatial coordinates D. What about second two? It's at spatial coordinates D. Same here. Spatial coordinates D, spatial coordinates D. Spatially, the ball never moved. If you look up, because we can't look at time, you know, we can't look at, we can't conceive time. So when we look at the ball, we'd look at it straight on. And all we would see is the first second it was here, the second second it was here, and the third second, we, we would only see it standing still. And why? Because your eyeball, let's say your face was right here, that X, right? The first, it looks like the ball's moving, but think about it. You are going through time the same uh, speed as the ball is going through time, right? A second for you is a second for the ball, right? So when the first second is here, it looks like the ball moved, but you would move too because you're moving through time just as fast as the ball. And now your eyeball would be at the red X, right? And so the ball relative to you did not move. It's still an inch in front of your face or whatever, you know what I mean? And then the third second happens, the ball doesn't move. It stays in spatial coordinates, but so do you. You move through time and then you'll be at this spot. So if we plot that, right, we plot it, we take out the time element, this is all you would see. You would see the ball just floating there in outer space, right? If you're moving at a constant velocity or just standing still in your spaceship, all you would see is this, the ball not moving. Second one, you would see it here. Second two, you would see it here. Second three, you would see it here, right? You'd see it right in front of your face like it never moved. Because going through time, you move the same way through time as the ball does. So you just, relative to each other, you just don't move through time. You know what I mean? Relative. You do, but it's both at the same rate, so you can't see it. Just like if this tube... Right, this pipe, if you were looking at it down this way, and the ball is moving through that pipe, you wouldn't see the whole pipe. You would just see it, you would just see the end part, the, the, the ball part. So that's flat space time. That's the way things should happen. Why don't things do that on Earth? Why don't it float on Earth? Why does it fall on Earth? Well, first of all, let me say that this is an inertial frame. Okay, you hold the ball out, it doesn't move compared to you, relative to you. Okay? And the, another definition of an inertial frame is where physics is at its simplest form. Okay? So this is nice and simple. Look how nice and simple. Grid, the ball don't even move. What could be more simpler than that? Nothing. Okay? Now let's move to an accelerated frame of reference, meaning the Earth. Okay? Now here's your grid. Why does it look different? It doesn't look the same as this, okay? Because this is now, instead of, you know, you're standing on your spaceship, you're standing on Earth. This is Earth, okay? And this is your same time axis and your space axis. Remember the other two uh, spatial dimensions, they just stay constant. We assume they stay constant, so that's why we don't have to worry about them in either example, okay? They stay the same. They never move. So now we can see that the space-time has been, or the spatial dimension has been warped, right? Look at that. Why? Because mass warps space, okay? And so now your grid is no longer flat space-time, it's curved flat, it's curved space-time, okay? But I want you to look, the ball... The first second is here, second, second, third, second, fourth second. Okay. Now I want you to see if your eye was looking at it like that, right? 
what would you see? Because you can't see the time dimension, right? Because your eye is going to be a foot in front of it here. It's going to be a foot in front of it here, foot in front of it here. You know what I mean? You move through time just like the ball does, okay? So what would you perceive if you took the time dimension out? Well, the first second it would be here, then here, then here, then here. So what does that look like? It looks like it's falling, doesn't it? It looks like it's falling, like it's moving, but is it really moving relative to space? Okay. Yes, it's moving to an outside observer. If you're out in outer space and you see whatever, yeah, relative to that, you know, relative to being outside of this, yeah, it's 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 it's, it's falling, but outside. But relative to the ball and its spatial coordinates, the ball is not moving at all, okay? It is not moving. Through time, it's moving. Everything's moving through time. We're all moving through time. But the ball itself, the spatial coordinates are the same, and it is not moving space-wise. Time-wise, yeah, it's moving through time. But through space, it's keeping the exact spatial coordinates. So it is not moving, okay? space-time itself moved and was curved and so as it moves through time yeah it's going to uh, appear or look like it's moving relative to someone outside of that free falling see this ball as it's falling it's in free fall that means it's in an inertial frame it's in a different inertia it's in a different frame of reference than someone standing on earth because if you're on earth you're in an accelerated frame of reference so to you it looks like it's falling, but if you're inside the same right frame of reference as the ball, the ball is not falling. The earth is accelerating up towards it, okay, to, with its frame of reference. If you're in an elevator and it falls and you, look, you have a window in the floor of the elevator, uh, you start floating. You're not moving. You're not being accelerated. You're floating. If you were accelerating, you know, you'd, you would feel it. You always know when you're accelerating. Just like when you accelerate your car, you can feel the force. You don't feel any forces because you're in free fall. That's why you're in an accelerate. You're in, a, in an inertial frame of reference at that point, okay? But the ball relative to space itself, it's keeping the same coordinates. It's always at, at coordinate D, spatial coordinate D, the entire time in my example. It never moved. Okay, so you would say this is falling, but I want you to think about it. What is the, and we don't have to care about the other two spatial coordinates that we're not mapping here, because we know they don't change. They're always the same. But what is the spatial coordinates in the first second? It's a D. What is the spatial coordinates at the second second? It is unchanged, D. It is in the same exact space, spatial coordinates that it was before. Where is it at second three? It is at D, the same exact spatial coordinates it was at before. Where is that here in the fourth second? It's, a, it's at D, again, the same exact. You can see it did, through space it didn't move at all. Through time it moved. And you can say it moved through space, but space also moved. Space was curved down. Space didn't actually fall. The ball didn't actually fall. Space is just curved, and as the ball traveled through time, instead of it staying in the same position relative to the floor or Earth or spaceship, it appeared to be moving downward, but it wasn't moving. It was just standing still. Space time was warped. It just followed that path through time. As it was, it was sitting in the same spot. And it travels through time, and but as it traveled through time, time was warped. I mean, space was warped, so it moved down to here. But relative to space itself, the coordinates is the same. It didn't move. It's a D here. It's a D spatial coordinates here. It's a D spatial coordinates here, and etc. So as the as the ball moves through time, it keeps the same spatial coordinates. It does not fall. Okay, so relative to space, the ball does not move, okay? It stays in the same spatial coordinates, but space is curved towards the center of the Earth. And since we cannot see the time dimension 
the bow appears 